Who's up for a slumber party? That's because today's video we're going to be going back and having a look at the DC Collectibles Infinite Crisis Harley Quinn figure. Would you believe I first had a look at this figure back in December 29th, 2014, so about four years ago. There's a reasoning why we're looking at her again, but before we do that, before we talk a little bit further about that, let's take the tape measure to figure out that Harley Quinn here, counting her uh, ponytails or pigtails, she stands at seven and a quarter inches in height. And the reasoning again, why we're having a look at her once again, is because this is one of my all-time favorite Harley Quinn figures. I thought I was going through my totes the other day. I came across her and I thought to myself, first of all, why haven't I put her on display? I packed her away pretty much right after I did the review of her and uh, she hasn't seen the light of day since. So, so after this review, Harley Quinn is gonna be going back out on display. But the other thing that came to my mind was I really should do a re-review, a throwback, if you will, of Harley Quinn, because again, this is one of my all-time favorite designs. It takes elements of a classic Harley Quinn and uh, kind of takes it to the element of her, well, in her pajamas. Really cool looking figure. Now we'll get into her in a second, get into the figure in a second, but first things first, let's have a look at the rather interesting looking display base that came with the Infinite Crisis figures. Harley Quinn's here is red. It's a translucent red, so you can see my hand right behind it. Two rather large peg holes dead center in the middle of the display base. She has all these additional holes here, which do, do serve some purpose. They kind of assist with holding her teddy bear um, bed post mallet. And uh, there's a couple of other little holes here. You can kind of line those up just to kind of give it some support. But uh, interesting looking display base. I guess while we're also we're, we've already got this in hand, so why don't we look at this right now. She also comes with a bed post. Uh, she has makeshifted into uh, a mallet, well, the equivalent of a mallet. I guess she's taken her favorite teddy bear, much to his dismay, and she's literally put the bed post right through him. All the stuffing is now sticking out from the sides, and then she's done her best just to kind of tape them up using some duct tape. A very neat look. The bed post is exquisite, right down to the little scratch marks, and you can make out the actual texturing here of the wood. Again, the tape is really nice. The bear itself, I really quite like too. All the stitch work and stuff around it. Uh, the backdrop of the very vibrant red, and then when you put white over top of it, and then the, the stitched panel outlining, it really does make the, the teddy bear pop. It is a heavy, well, not considerably heavy, but by contrast to say, well, about the figure, it's not that much lighter actually than Harley Quinn itself. Um, she doesn't do the greatest of jobs of holding the mallets. I'll show you that in a second, but let's have a look at some of the other accessories. She comes also with like a little cap gun. It almost looks like the equivalent of like a Nerf gun. A slightly darker mustard orange, backed up that with the, uh, the additional blue and the orange. Makes for a fun little, a little cap gun. Everything really on, everything that comes included with this particular figure is really more intended for play. It's just kind of her playing around. So instead of a larger cap gun that could probably fire, we've got like a little dart gun. And instead of the mallet, we've got ourselves the poor teddy bear that has suffered as a result of it. She also comes included with a pair of glasses. The glasses, when you get her out of packaging, if you do pick this one up for yourself, and I really would recommend it, the glasses are a separate piece. They are a little on the, of course, as you can imagine, very easy to drop. Hold on one second. Yes, the floor has claimed yet another accessory. She does come, like I said, with a pair of glasses, but she do, these are very fragile, very easy to drop out of your hand apparently as well. And they have a translucent uh, clear plastic or pretty much clear plastic running through it, which is good to help showcase her eyes. You're not gonna get the eyes lost as a result of it. Let's have a look at the figure and then we'll kind of add all this stuff. I'm windshield wiping across the screen and we'll add all the accessories on top of that. So the figure itself, like I said, is a more classic looking Harley Quinn in the sense that it is a red a onesie pajama, but it still has the traditional colors of the reds, the blacks, and of course the whites in there as well. The Harley Quinn diamonds are very generously placed all around it. And instead of actually the Harley Quinn Jester hat, 
she has a pair of bunny ears in a folded back hoodie. The face sculpt is really nice. She does have like this, I can't describe it, it's almost like a little bit of like glue residue or something like that on her nose. That was there when I got the figure. Unfortunately, as you could probably imagine, it's still there. I don't think it would have just gone up and vanished. The eyes are probably one of the more disappointing aspects. They're a little on the muddy side. The panel outlining around the eyes do the best job that they could, but of all the things that I think could have been improved on the figure is the eyes. It just even like the area, the corner areas here aren't the cleanest. The lines really aren't the best applied, but at least, at the very least, the glasses are going to cover over top of that. Down below, she's got her uh, her braces on, very open smile with braces, and she's got her lipstick, and of course, she's got her pigtails, well, ponytail pigtails. I always get the two confused, pigtails, um, with the little pink tips to them, very nicely uh, well done there. And uh, let's go ahead and get the glasses going, because again, you could display her with or without, with or sans the glasses and those fit just very easily over top of the bridge of her nose. I wonder if they just added that little bit, remember that thing I was talking about on her nose? I wonder if it's just to assist it in uh, keeping the glasses on her head. But I mean, the glasses do stay relatively good in place. I don't feel like they're really gonna be going anywhere here. And again, it's a nice look to have her really big giant glasses. Almost looks like she's found her dad's glasses or a very uh, old pair of glasses in a trunk somewhere. Other than for really the eyes that I believe could have been correct and done a little bit better, paint is generally pretty clean and well executed here on the figure itself. Again, you've got the head to or neck area to the bottom area of her pajamas in a very bright, almost looks like cherry taffy sort of red. One can't overlook, as I've probably turned the figure around a couple of times and you were wondering when I was going to talk about it, she does have the little trap door at bottoms of her pajamas and you can see that yes she is sporting Batman underwear Batman underwear further down from that she is also wearing a pair of bunny slippers which so happen to also have big giant smiles perhaps maybe referencing Mr. J and again I do like the fact that they put even like the little pom-pom tails and the big giant ears these I would think would be on the fragile side, but they seem to be uh, really secure on the figure. A nice dense amount of plastic happening there. And then there's the undersides of her feet. We'll go through her posability, and then after that, we'll add all the accessories and stuff to her, and then get her fully displayed. So her head rotates, technically all the way around. This is not something you would want to do with the real Harley Quinn. The glasses, yes, will happen from time to time those will pop off she does have a slight nod back and forth a slight tilt uh, her pigtails don't look like they have posability I started rotating them and I think if anything I'm developing a stress mark so I would say stay away from rotating the pigtails if you so happen to have the figure for yourself the arms hinge outward rotate back and forth a bend at the elbow which also allows that ro rotation in the forearm and her hands also rotate as well. Nothing pretty much from like the neck down until you get to the feet, and the feet can also rotate back and forth. She is a little on the more limited side when it comes to posability, but I guess based on the sculpt, I would have preferred having her look like this than having a figure that, was, that, that had some posability to it. I'm really okay. It depends on the figure itself. If it's a figure I would want to put in some dynamic poses, absolutely, I would feel a little robbed of the fact that she wouldn't have as much happening here. But for the nature of the way that the figure is posed, this is kind of like one of those just really fun posed figures. Something you're just gonna put on a base and admire from time to time. So let's go ahead and get her on the base here. Again, you've got those two center posts. Gonna attach it to her feet. One peg, by the way, is on the, the, the toes themselves and one's actually at the ball of her feet so attach that like so line up the other hole there we go and what you'll immediately get is an obviously arched spacing between the one foot and the base and then she is on her base itself now if you want to get her holding her accessories you could really put them in either hand but based on the way that the mallet is it makes more sense to put the, the cap gun 
in this hand. And you get somewhat of a quasi trigger finger happening here. It's not the most secure. Hold on one second. The floor claims a second accessory. I wonder if that's a new record. Anyways, we can put the pistol into her hand. Slightly tip it a little bit to the side, just enough that the finger kind of gets in there. There we go. There's the trigger finger happening. And then the mallet, the mallet be being of its size, its weight, and the thickness of the actual bed post, it's next to impossible for her to actually hold it. Even if you were to hold it, it would be extremely top heavy and uh, it would add some considerable wear and tear to her joints. So as a result, the best thing you can do is just sort of having her hold it. Based on the nature, how wide her hand is, you can even get it really around the larger area of the post, but I usually just display her, or when I was going to be displaying her, um, I was going to just have the hand around the end there, which I think is its intended purpose. And then again, you've got all these little holes, these little notations in the base itself. So those in some ways help assist holding the bear in place. You can see the knob of the bed post is sitting very comfortably now in those holes. And again, you can really make use of some of these. I don't know if that was their intended function, but they serve the per per perfect function of having those of the, uh, the head posts there sitting in place. And there you have Harley Quinn. Again, not the most poseable of figures, but one of my all-time favorites. And I think the reasoning why I love this figure so much is because it's a departure from what we would normally get from Harley Quinn. Instead of her wearing an outfit that she would be wearing outwards, outside, she instead is staying inside and she's wearing herself a pair of pajamas, but it still stays faithful to the original Harley Quinn design. The reds, of course, the alternating black and the red in the collar, the hood, and then, of course, you've got the Harlequin diamonds making up the majority of her outfit. It's fun. It's playful. The icing on the cake, of course, is the fact that you're also getting the quasi-made-up bear mallet that she can also sport in her hand. This would have been a perfect figure if DC Collectibles had ever expanded on it and given us a statue version of it. Something probably a little bit more dynamic in the way that she was posed, maybe something a little bit more playful. But keeping to this design, I think this figure could have worked excellently as a statue. And if they had released her as a statue, I would have picked her up instantly. Again, it was one of my all-time favorite Harley Quinns here from the Infinite Crisis line. I don't know why, and even thinking about it now as I'm looking at her, I don't even know why I put her away. I probably reviewed her and I had her on display for a few weeks or so, and I probably just put her away into a tote to free up some space. I was only going through my totes the other day when I was reintroduced to this figure, and then I thought to myself, not only do I want to re-review her, but I also want to put her back on display where I think she was really intended to be right from day one. Today we were having a throwback and going back and having a look at the DC collectibles. This was the DC Infinite Crisis, Harley Quinn in her jammies. If you guys wanted to go back and have a look at some of the other throwbacks that I've gone back to, there's a playlist designated just for throwbacks. If Harley Quinn is the thing that tickles your fancy, then there's also a playlist also designated just for Harley Quinn. We're going to do some more throwbacks in the next couple of videos, so stay tuned for those. Of course, regular videos will be coming your way as well. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.